In the last couple of videos, we've been looking at how we can use k-means to identify how many clusters there are um, in the data, and that can be useful in and of itself. Um, another common strategy is that we'll use k-means as pre-processing uh, for another stage in our pipeline. And, and more generally, right, you might apply some unsupervised learning technique like k-means or principal component analysis uh, to create better inputs for a supervised technique, um, for example, logistic uh, regression. Right, so I may do that here. And I've, I've really tried to create data that um, will really make this work well. And so here I, you can see on the left both my training data and my test data on the right. And, um, and what you can see in the training data is that I've created five clusters here. And uh, these clusters are kind of right on top of each other. And um, out of the five clusters, four of them have black dots and one of them has gray dots. And other than that, there's just gray dots kind of randomly distributed um, throughout the space. And then on the right, we want to predict that. And so clearly there are some patterns here. For example, um, as a human, I might predict that these are in a similar area as this cluster of black dots over here. Um, so I'd probably guess that these are, are black. And then other dots, right? Like if I'm saying in this space right here, those are probably gray because in the training data, those were gray. And so certainly it would be hard to draw a single line that separates the black dots from the gray dots uh, for the purposes of a logistic regression. So we're going to have to do some sort of pre-processing. Okay, so I'm going to create my pipeline down here. Uh, P is a pipeline. And, uh, and a pipeline is just a list of steps. And uh, the last step, the most important one, may be a logistic regression, like so. And, um, and the first one is going to be standard scaling. Standard scalar, like so. And then eventually I'm going to add in uh, k means uh, as a pre processing step to help logistic regression uh, work better. And so I'm going to do this. I'm going to fit my model. So p.fit. And um, what do I want to fit to? Well, I've already taken my data frame up here and split it into training and test data. And, um, and I can see that my two input columns are x0 and x1. So I may just put those in a variable here. I'm going to say x columns is x0 and x1. And then my y column I'm trying to predict is just y. As so I'm going to predict um, on the training data, or fit on the training data, those x columns. And I'm going to compare that to my y column. And then after I do that, I want to score. How well does this um, classifier work? So I'm going to score it on my testing data. And so I run that, and I see it's not doing very well. Right? It's only getting about 63% correct uh, because it's hard to separate those black dots uh, from the gray dots. And, um, and that's because when I just have a regular logistic regression, it has to only put a straight line there. So if I introduce k-means as a pre-processing step, let's try that. I create k-means here, and, um, and and let me specify the number of clusters. I'll say n clusters equals um, let's say three first. Let me try running that, and uh, and uh, oh, what, what happened there? Um, I have an extra parenthesis just kind of randomly. There we go, that's where it's supposed to be. Excuse me. Okay, so still not very good because there's not enough clusters here, right? I guess the original there are five clusters. If I try jumping up to five, uh, you can see that I'm doing significantly better. But if I go up to something like 10, uh, better still, right? I can kind of capture the different areas and realize how close they are. But having more clusters when I'm doing this pre-processing um, is generally not gonna be as problematic as having two, a few clusters. So what's happening here when I'm taking the input variables to this? Well, I'm using this k-means uh, step on the data, right? So what this is outputting is the distance to each of those 10 clusters that I identified, right? So I might know as one of my variables, well, what is the distance to this cluster here? And of course, if that distance is small, then it's probably a, a black point. I might also have another column that says, well, what is the distance to this cluster here? Um, if that's small, well, then it's actually probably a, a gray point. Um, so this is one way to do the pre-processing. Um, an alternative, which probably works just as well, would be uh, polynomial features could also um, could also kind of figure out that more complex boundary between the black and the gray.